and a lot of you guys were patiently standing by to see how all these AI robot lawn mowers were going to perform. Well, today we're going to be unboxing and doing a short review of the Luba 2, which is Momotion's second generation lawnmower. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm very excited to see how this performs. This is a paid sponsored review by Momotion, so I can show you the capabilities of the Luba 2. Got it. It looks like the uh, Luba was sent to me by Ace Ventura. I have a package for you. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Matter of fact, Luba called me and said, hey, we've been doing demos in Las Vegas. Do you want one of the demo units? We can get it to you quicker. I said, yeah, give me one that's used. Let's see what this thing is all about the more wear and tear the better off so we can give you guys at home a better idea of what you're getting into the luba 2 is a boundary wire-free robot mower the most specified programmed areas of your lawn on its own when it finishes the task it goes back to the charging station now if it gets low on battery it goes back to the charging station recharges and then resumes where it left off all on its own well, let's get the price right out of the way. The Luba 2 ranges from $2,000 on up to $4,000, just depending on the model that you decide to purchase. The Luba 2 comes as a complete kit. It comes with an RTK antenna, a charging station, some uh, change of blades, and of course, the Luba 2 AI robot mower. Let's talk about what Momotion's promising us with the Luba 2. The Luba 2 comes in four different models. Each one looked the same. Now, the models correlate to the amount of space that it's going to cut. So the one 1,000, the 2,000, the 3,000, the 5,000, and the 10,000 correlates to the amount of grass and square meters that you're able to mow. Now, the programming capabilities of it are slightly larger than the area space it can mow. But in other terms, it's going to mow between a quarter acre of grass on up to two and a half acres of grass, depending on the model. Now, here's where it gets confusing. Each one of these models comes in two separate heights of cut. One with a cutting height of one inch on up to 2.7 inches height of cut, and the other is 2.2 inches on up to four inches, depending on your cutting preference, which we're gonna get into that a little bit later. Now, Momotion has specced the Luba 2 with a large rotary cutting style deck that spans 15.7 inches. Its cutting time for most models is three hours, other than the 1000 version, which is rated for two hours. It takes about uh, 150 minutes for most of these models to charge, and 90 minutes for the 1000. Now it's capable of mowing about 5,300 square feet of mow space per hour and it's able to program zones and walking paths and each one of those depends on the actual model. So the 1000 does about 10 zone and I believe the 10,000 model does up to 30 zones. Now the RTK itself, the antenna, does 120 meters or about a 400 foot radius and the Luba 2 also comes equipped with a binocular camera system and also ultra ultrasonic sensors. This helps for both obstacle avoidance and boundary detection. Now its waterproof rating is IPX6 and it comes complete with rain detection system or rain sensor that suspends cutting on rainy days. It's also capable of climbing up to a 38 degree slow. And on top of all this, it's voice control programmable through Alexa or Google Assistant. Now, as far as the warranty goes, the main parts of the mower and battery are covered under a two-year warranty. That also includes the charging station and the RTK antenna, while the blades uh, of the mower and the tires, they're not under warranty. Now, I kind of want to share with you guys my experience. I've had this machine a little over three months now. As far as the installation goes, this machine, is manually programmable and the installation is fairly simple. You pick an open space in the yard for the base station and the RTK unit and the rest is done through the software. You basically play like a video game and you walk behind the machine and you establish all your boundaries. Now during this process you can create multiple zones, you can set up no-go zones and you're basically setting up all your boundaries and I highly suggest going through all the settings. Now once you're done you can set your schedule and you can actually start the Oh, baby. Now, in my opinion, the Momotion software is the most open or largest software that you can get out of any of the other AI robot mowers. They really give you full control over the entire mower. Not only can you control the cut pattern, your overlap passes, your schedule, your cut speed, you can control the degree at which you overlap and the degree at which you change your next cut. You can speed things up, you can slow things down. It really allows for full control of the machine and it's pretty dang cool if you ask me. Now, I've had this mower, like I said before, for a few months now, and uh, having 
had run this on a few different properties. Here's a few things I've learned if you want to have a good experience with the mower. The mower runs super accurate and I've gone through and I made a bunch of mistakes on purpose so I can kind of show you guys uh, or teach you what not to do. Now, if you follow these rules, you're gonna have a really good experience. Now, first of all, you have to do yourself a favor and put the antenna on the roof or you need to use the roof mount that's included. Now, the reason why I say this is because a lot of times you're gonna think that you have 23 satellites connected and everything's going, but what you don't see is the fluctuation in the signal. So if you just get it in the highest spot or in an open, unobtrused area, you're gonna have a much better time on this. It's important to remember that the robot is always communicating with both the RTK unit and the satellites in the sky. It's, it's a tricky triangle that they have going on. So when the antenna on the robot is obstructed, it also can't initialize. So it's super important that not only is the antenna in an open area, but you've also got the base station six feet or more off of the base of the house or clearing the soffits as best as you possibly can. Now next, if you guys have any uh, trees, trampolines, permanent tables, etc., set up in the yard, you need to set those areas up manually with the no-go zones. Now, this is for a couple of reasons. It's also going to help keep the robot from having connectivity issues, especially under the trees. When it loses connectivity to the sky, it runs into objects. It starts to wander, almost like a robot vacuum. And it does this because it's trying to reconnect to the satellites in the sky and reestablish its GPS coordinates. Now, as many other people have discovered, the machine can be super stubborn. If it loses connectivity and it makes up its mind on an area that it wants to go to, it's just gonna keep going and going. It doesn't matter if it's a fence post, it doesn't matter if it's a kitchen table, it's just going to keep going that direction. So save yourself the hassle. Wherever you need to set up no-go zones, I recommend anything that, you know, six inches or larger is where I would do. Now, as far as cut quality goes, this machine is a rotary style mower that uses double-sided razor blades that need to be changed out about every four to six weeks. I've experienced some light hazing on the lawn or some browning out, especially when I neglect to swap these razor blades out. So you need to make sure that you do that. This style mower was really made to take a quarter of an inch off the top or less. Let's say that you've got some sort of a really dense lawn like I do with bluegrass, well, I highly recommend that you just slow the machine down, use the slower settings. You're gonna get a much better cut quality. Look at that majestic view. And I got the diamonds to match it. Good old lube it too, man. This thing's pretty cool. Check it out. Oh yeah, diamonds, baby. <laughs> now, since the original launch of the Luba, the Luba 2 may not look that different, but it really is. They've changed some significant things here. The original Nobby tires were causing a lot of rutting, so they went with the omnidirectional tires. I believe this one was rated, and don't quote me on this, but somewhere between a 34 uh, degree slope. This one's rated to go all the way up to 38. I've tested both of these out at 34 degrees. This one here is running straighter lines downhill as well as uphill. Been very pleased with it. Now, this one came with four ultrasonic sensors for your obstacle avoidance. And frankly, in the past, I've run my little game. It ran really, really well. The difference is this one has the 3D vision and they took one of the ultrasonic sensors away. So this one's got three ultrasonic sensors plus the 3D binocular vision camera. This is really for boundary detection and obstacle avoidance. So it's got a database of how it's perceiving shapes and whatnot. Now the coolest thing about it is you can actually access the camera and see what the mower is actually seeing. So if you got stuck or let's just say you wanted to see what was going on in the front yard while it was mowing, you can actually go into this and access the camera. Very, very cool. And it opens it up to a few things in the future, like maybe some security measures, which would be really, really cool. At first, First, when I was playing with this, they hadn't had the firmware update to access the vision. And I had this thing, like I was telling you, it can be stubborn. If you guys have one of these out there, you know, when it makes up its mind, it wants to go somewhere, it's just going to keep hammering it. We're run right up a tree, no problem. Since they've actually had that update, I've not had very many problems. But as I've described before, very, very thorough on setting up no-go zones around anything that's got a post or a diameter of six inches or wider. You've really got to use the mapping features if you want to have the best experience with it.
with it. Now the Luba 2 is well built. It's just under 40 pounds. The original Luba was one of the very first boundary free robot mowers I ever tested out and it spoiled me. I, I kind of geeked out on it initially and I will boldly say that Mamotion has one of the best build quality robot mowers on the market. It's a solid piece of equipment. I mean, just <laughs> look at it. It is this little Formula One style car it's just super cool to have it's a brick it feels like a tank it acts like a tank very well built now keep in mind if you're gonna run it over with a car it's gonna break <laughs> but other than that let's go over some of the common questions that i get now a lot of you guys want to know if it's got anti-theft features in it the mower has built-in gps it's also got an alarm it's going to let you know on the app when it gets outside of its zone and on top of that if it is stolen it's going to show you the the, uh, GPS coordinates once they turn it on, similar to what we had with cell phones back in the day. So I don't anticipate a lot of people wanting to steal these because they're gonna get caught. Another popular question I have is, can it handle wet or rainy conditions? Now, due to the style of the rotary cutting deck in the blade system, it's best to wait till the blades of the grass are dry. It's also recommended to clean the machine off weekly to get rid of the, uh, the built up residue, especially in these little shoots over here. Uh, that can cause problems. The other question that you guys want to know is, can it work at night? And the, absolutely. The Luba 2, since it is a GPS coordinated device, it can work at night with some limitations. We don't have a sufficient amount of light for the binocular system. It's going to use the bump sensor to really be your obstacle avoidance. The other question is, what height of cut should I buy? Most of all, this is a personal preference, but let's jump into this. Here's what I'm going to tell you. These machines are really meant to run a minimum of four to six days a week. They're not bushwhackers. They're not meant to take more than a half inch off the top. They don't have a mulching system where it's just gonna suck the grass up and chop it up a hundred times. If you're gonna mow seven days a week, you can do that one inch, no problem. Six to seven days a week, keeping your grass at one inch. And most grass types are gonna be able to handle that other than your uh, turf type tall fescue, your St. Augustine. But if you just really enjoy that longer grass type and you're thinking to yourself, okay, I'll keep my lawn around two inches possibly just by the higher model if you do not have an affinity to go lower some of you guys are going to err on the fact that you're going to buy a model that's going to be really close to the area that you have to mow so for instance you bought the 1000 because you're like okay i've got a quarter acre of grass well when you really had a third of an acre and it can't really keep up so then you're like okay i'm going to split it up a little bit and i'm only going to mow three to four days a week you're going to want the bigger model for erring i highly recommend you get on google maps first measure your lawn out, make sure that you buy the right model. So hopefully that helps. If not, hit me up down in the comments down below. Love to answer anything that you guys have questions with. Let's dive right into my favorite part about the video where I talk about a few of the things I absolutely love about the Luba 2 and also a few of the things I'm really hoping that they change for the future. Number one, the build quality on this product versus the price that you're going to pay is really, really high. They have that front end suspension, these omnidirectional tires, it can handle both a refined situation like mine or rugged terrains like I've had this machine up at my buddy's house. So whether you like to mow at one inch and have that real clean look, or if you've got a really hilly area between 24 and 37 degrees, the Luba 2 can handle it. Now with the addition of the 3D vision, one thing I've noticed is the edge cutting has gotten a lot better. The edge cutting now is really honing in on those border edges between two inches and four inches which I haven't seen in the past, and it's been a fantastic addition. Now, the other thing is, is the app. It's very open. You can pretty much take control and program this however you'd like, and one of my favorite things to do is to change the direction at which I mow every single time. And I really love they'll do that zigzag or checkerboard pattern. It's laid down some really sick stripes on my lawn. And you can see here the diamonds I'm laying down. They look fantastic. Oh yeah, diamonds, baby. Now, a couple of things I really wish that they would change. The first one is me being very picky. <laughs> it's just when it completes the mow, it'll do this random pattern throughout your lawn going back to the charging station. I really wish that they would just program that to follow the border edge back to the charging station. Now I know there are some workarounds. A lot of you guys are gonna chime into the comments. Oh, you just change it to make a channel going back and whatnot. But for the beginners and the people that are just getting into this, it's a lot of ask. It takes a little bit of uh, research 
to figure out how to do that initially. Now, the other thing I'd like to see change is I like better communication during the setup process. I've tested this out a lot. If you don't have the best signal strength from the antenna, or let's say that you've got the charging station too close to the house, this thing will allow you to program the entire thing and it'll start doing that uh, robot vacuum mode where it's just kind of wandering everywhere. Well, it's doing that because it's got weak signal strength to the sky. And I've seen it, if you just move the base station even 12 inches off of the house, just 12 inches off the house, it makes a world of difference. And I know I've had you guys a lot during the installation process it needs to be in a wide open space but i really wish there was a communication difference saying hey listen your base station is too close to the house or hey we don't have enough line of sight from the rtk antenna i'm not sure what that would look like programming wise and i know that the majority of this is user error and also in the app itself, you can go to both the base station signal strength and also the RTK signal strength and really see where it's at. But again, for those beginners out there, it would be a nice addition. But I will say this, once you get everything dialed in, it pretty much runs by itself. I've had a few user errors where my kids have left stuff out, not the fault of the robot, um, but I will say the 3D vision obstacle avoidance, it got to the point where it was randomly detecting pine cones in my buddy's lawn. It was amazing. So I know the future is actually looking really bright for Motion and the Luba series. Now in the end, if you're in the market for an AI robot mower, it's tough to beat the Motion Luba 2. So they've capped the market between the 1000 series that mows a quarter of an acre lot all the way up to two and a half acres. It's got that extra wide deck it 15.7 inches and they've got the most customizable system for their application on the market today but if you guys have any questions comments or concerns if you have anything to add hit me up down in the comments down below we know we'd love to help you guys out until next time guys it's pest and lawn we're slaying lawns